کی خوبصورت ظاہری شکل و شباہت Allah wa jalla wala does not want us to be we should connected to magic we should be connected to jinnat we should connected to shayateen we should connected to wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajmain jazakallah for everyone to uh, come and participating and i request uh, all the brothers uh, especially here to um, sit somewhere we can see the screen uh, on the either side inshallah You've seen me plenty of times, so there's no need to see me as such. Main thing you can see the screen and can hear me well. That, that's important, inshallah. Inshallah, until last year, uh, we'll continue uh, with this. So, alhamdulillah, like we've been hearing about, uh, and this is about Sayyidina Sheikh um, Abdul Aziz Al Dabbaq, and I hope you can see the screen as well. <coughs> Uh, that how uh, uh, you know a, b- a blessed of a person he is one of the uh, waliya kamil was highest caliber of awliya friend of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that in uh, such a you know like uh, one brother was just asking me that uh, so uh, when he say for example he is uh, like a khidr of this ummah radhiyallahu anhu you know is that mean that we have to compare with someone else and they were not and the etiquette uh, the adab is that when it comes to the awliya like with the prophets that uh, we're not allowed to in a way in a comparative way compare prophets he is this and he is that but we can do like in the quran and surah baqarah at the end and uh, the last ruku is mentioned that you know uh, we shouldn't but what we could do is you can ma- mention the virtue of the prophet like he's you know he's this he had the special quality of this this prophet has a special quality like sayyidina um ibrahim alayhi salam he was known as what khalilullah so he was a special friend of allah so now do we compare with someone else well are they not friend as well of course they're all friend of allah in that sense they're prophets he has a special quality for example with the relation with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or like sayyidina musa alayhi salam he's known as well, kalimullah he spoke to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's his special speciality a special quality amongst other qualities that they all possess or sayyidina isa alayhi salam he's known as what ruhullah you know the spirit of allah is special quality with the spirit as well so this is like a special virtue of each individual prophets we mentioning likewise the all the awliyas of this ummah they like in a, you know in a, in a, imagine imagine a paradise and garden of paradise and you see very beautiful flowers all beautifully laid out in the garden very beautiful each one you look at yet is a, a special beauty in it but let's say you looked looked at one of them and that flower has a special beauty which you like which is more you know uh, res- which which resonate to your liking to your for example uh, nature as well so then you you actually draw attention to that flower because it's a special quality it has but that doesn't mean then then you start to say oh other flowers are not beautiful in this garden of paradise no they're all beautiful of course likewise sheikh saidin abdul aziz the bag mentioned that is a special like khizr uh, uh, radhiyallahu anhu saidin ahmad khizr special quality of ummi that special uh, way he has learned this knowledge and close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so we should celebrate that the virtue of which we are doing inshallah and on that basis um, we want to also have to think like i was mentioning earlier that uh, if you now think and analyze in our daily lives i'm not even talking about deen like let's say ed- example of education by and large everyone here has gone to school system they've done their gcse's at all levels if you're old enough 
if you remember all of us were, and then you know A levels, then some went to university and so on, and then you got your exam. Some are really good, they study hard, they get good results. Some are okay, they they're on a, you know, they're good but they're not best or they're not excellent. Some are in between. Some are just about their pass, and they put the effort in and so on. And there are those, for example, like, you know. They have to put the hours in, in terms of revisions, in terms of doing the homework and so on, then they get good results as well. So they're also very good students. But there are those you hear very often, not, not regularly, that they're God gifted, they say. What do they say? Oh, he's God gifted. He doesn't really have to study. He's got like what they call a photographic memory. That he looks at a text and that's it. he remembers everything. And he hardly revises anything like that. You, I don't know, you might have not come across because it's very rare. That's the whole point I'm saying. They're very so God gifted that IQ level is so high that you know the age of 12 they've gone to Oxford University and he's got a degree, and by 16 he's got a PhD. You hear like that, you know, once in every blue moon, like they say. So in every field you have that very occasionally rare. You have a rare, like a, you know, you could say a gem of beauty that exists, and everyone you know marvel to that. Like in football as well. You know, they're all football professional, they're really good. But you come one or two footballers, they say, oh, it's amazing, it's, it's the best of all, uh, greatest of all time, and so on. I don't want to mention any names, but I'm just giving you an example. Can, you can relate to this. Whereas other footballers, they're still good. But why are they actually praised of this person? Because of the special qualities they possess as well. Likewise, human beings, they're all, in one sense, servant of Allah. They're also a friend of Allah as well. Everyone, human being, especially, you know, people who have faith, Iman. And everyone who has potential, who, those who are not believers yet, they have potential to become friends of Allah as well. But amongst them, then sometimes there are others who do good, the effort in, we like, for example, we make mistakes, we make mistakes, we do sin, we do toba, we turn to Allah SWT. And through that process, they can become pious and righteous as well. And become you know, people of God, of Salih. But amongst, in, the, in, the, in relation to Allah SWT, there are sometimes such people that they are God gifted in spirituality and closeness to Allah SWT and the power and the knowledge. They are just unique. By born they are very special. They are friends of Allah SWT. You very famous everyone knows about Sheikh Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani. He was a born a wali. Likewise, in, in the century, Sayyidina Sheikh Abdul Aziz al Bakh, he was also born a wali, very special. So, in that term, if I want to use, if I can use, he's God gifted in that sense, in the spirituality, in the, in the, in the, in the realm of uh, friendship of Allah SWT, is God gifted. It's a special quality Allah SWT has bestowed. And in, from a very, very young age, Alhamdulillah, he received many openings. You must have heard uh, our uh, Ustad Kari Ajaz mention about the meeting of Sheikh Sayyidina Ahmed Khazir. And they were then the greater great illumination, Fatih Kabir it's called, and, and he had the opening. But he was such that at a very young age from his beloved uncle, uh, uh, great uncle, he received certain blessing that in the age of maybe six, seven, or maybe around that age, he was already seeing many things, which I'll go through some of the examples of as well. He, was, he can always see what's going on with someone else living for thousands of miles away. Obviously, uh, not the level of uh, the greatest opening, which they have illumination. So he was already a you know, blessed person. He had all this good, you could say, good uh, um, uh, news about him, that his pious you know, predecessors, they said about such a wali will be born like no other. And he heard of what Sheikh Sidi uh, uh, Dr. Aziz mentioned yesterday, that all the, you could say, turuk and the teaching and the awliya, they're all surmised and come to Sheikh Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al as well. Everything, all the awliya that you know of, Maghrib, Morocco. And Morocco is such a place that it is one of the highest concentration level of Ahl Bayt exists there in Morocco. Every other corner, mashallah, you can find you know, the, the Ahl Bayt. Obviously, there are other you know, uh, people of ethnicity there as well. And he is like a culmination of that city. And that's why this uh, you know, very beautifully shining grave of the Mazar in, in Fez, you can see. It stands out amongst many other, uh, what you call mausoleum as well. So, what is Karama? We always hear that, or, 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 or a special event. Karama is basically it's a miraculous, supernatural demonstration by the saints, i.e., friends of Allah SWT. Uh, by obviously by permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this act is performed by the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through them to honor them so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honoring them raising their status or letting us like you and I know who this person is the, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
So I was saying to Brother Imran earlier that now you can see a miracle manifesting in this day and age that we are opening up. We know who we are, how sinful we are or not, how much baggages we carry daily, you know, let alone the previous sins, you know, so many baggages of and dirt we pick up every day. How much you know, our relationship is with my, our families and our friends, how much you know, devilish acts we are doing. And here, within 10, 12, 15 hours, actual Murakawa hours is only two hours, for example. Within that two hours, we're opening up, we sing Kaaba, we sing in a, 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 the uh, Hajar Aswad, we sing the pious and the righteous, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mundina Sharif, and so on. It is a miracle, nothing else. Because, you know, we lived our life. Why is it that today is Saturday and Friday or Thursday I was the same person and I received nothing like that on Thursday night, on Thursday morning, on Friday morning. Suddenly I've come here by, by Friday morning, Saturday morning I'm receiving everything. It's not that I've done something, it's, it's a miraculous event happening, manifesting through us about those who are teaching this now. So even if it's a high level of you know, miracles we can see here, Karama we are seeing here inshallah. And as you know, karama always happens to those people, obviously, who are in conformity of Sharia and Sunnah, very strict following of Sharia and Sunnah and the path as well. So that's obviously goes without saying, mashallah. So a great miracle. Like I said, Shah Sayyidina Abdul Aziz the Bagh, in every aspect of his life, an extraordinary, and every circumstance was wondrous in every aspect. You know, his whole, his life the, that he lived, that in itself is a miracle, every aspect of it as well. And like mentioned, uh, that he's an Ummi saint. What do we mean by Ummi saint? You, you've heard of this term now, and uh, one or two uh, that have explained. So may, let me quickly ask, just to um, keep us engaged and wake. Um, Brother um, Hasnain, what do you understand by Ummi now? Um, it's not full, it's part of that. It's not the full picture. What you said is true, but it's not the full picture uh, as well. Okay, that's good. Good effort, mashallah. Uh, Brother uh, Daniel. Mashallah, that's really good. That's, an, uh, that's the right understanding, mashallah. Uh, Brother um, Tanim. It's similar to what Hussein said. Yeah, okay, yeah, so you're all right. So just to give you a fuller picture, um, basically, it's the word um Arabic, uh, which I've learned obviously one or two words from the, our teacher. It refers to the origin of something. Um, like um, like you know, when the child is born, it comes from the um, you know, the womb. English very similar as well. Womb of a mother, it comes from the origin. So a uh, very rahim, very you know, uh, peaceful, very blessed place, you know, uh, very you know, uh, merciful place as well. So in this regards, if it refers to the origin, here it means that the awliya, the knowledge that he's gained. He's re, uh, received it from the original source, and that is who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this has a special quality, that in itself is a miracle, because we also say, Nabi al-Ummi, who's that? Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, unfortunately, many people, even the academics say, oh, he's an unlettered prophet. That is the greatest, I would say, disrespecting him, when he saw oh, he didn't know how to read or write. That is, in a way, you know, is, is almost obviously you know, they're, on, they're on doing it on purpose, but almost he's saying accusation. Oh, he did not read or write. In our culture, when we say someone do not read or write, what do we say? Anpar. Oh, he doesn't know how to read or write. It's like a very derogatory term we use. So you have to be careful when we say, oh, he's, he's an unlettered prophet. He had, it has a special meaning here. And what that means here is that. Like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he never went to another teacher, he learned like philosophy, whatever else at the time, or other religions, Christianity and other faith. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala directly gave him the knowledge of Quran and all the other knowledge that you know, he knows, we, Allah knows best how much knowledge he has and he continues increasing. So that quality is at the, on the highest level, is reflected upon whom? Shaykh Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al -Dabbaq. So yes, he's not formally gone to any in higher institution of learning, like a madrasa, like a madaris, learn in life and the manti, and the grammar, and high level of, you know, uh, you could say, you know, uh, uh, hadith and text and all the commentary and so on. But he has learned directly from Allah SWT. And I hope I have time, I'll try to demonstrate to you that the knowledge that he did possess, even regarding the sciences of Islam, like, you know, fiqh, 
uh, aqidah, hadith, commentary of hadith, the originality, all the complexity of the hadith as well, the Quran, where it came from. Even the scholars, the highest level of scholars of the day, they're completely uh, awestruck by that, the level of knowledge that he possessed, and he used to explain. And they used to explain, not just that, oh, I remember I've studied this text. It's as though he's living, they're witnessing this. It's like a live account. You know, we all want in, in this day and age of 24-hour news. What they want is reporter, they want live account. An event took place, there's a reporter there straight away. They don't want to hear, oh, my friend told me this, he said he saw this, I said, no, have you seen it? What did they say? I want to see a live account witness. Well, have you seen the event took place? Oh, so then, then, then they get, then they get uh, like a, a person from the street. He goes, oh yeah, I was there. I witnessed it. So he relates. So this happened and that happened and I got hurt like that. And it becomes more believable because it's a live account. So like when Said the Sheikh Abdul Aziz the Bagh is to relay something, any question they used to ask, they used to say as though they're seeing it live and witnessing it and mentioning it. There's no ambiguity about what they're saying. Oh, I think it is, I think it's that. That's the knowledge they possessed, although they've not formally gone to madrasa system as such. So in fact, what their knowledge they possessed is far outweighed, far out, you know, gone beyond, above and beyond what any scholars of the day actually in, used to know about this science, for example. I'll go and be more detailed, maybe if I have time, inshallah. One of the greatest miracle of Sayyid Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al which uh, his own student have said, he, this student of a very prominent student, and Ustad Imam Kais will go through all the prominent students and their represent representatives of uh, Sheikh Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al -Bah until the current day. One of them is named Sheikh uh, Ahmed Mubarak al-Lamati, uh, al Sijil Masi, uh, a very famous, uh, like uh, old city, al Sijil Masi is from there. He was a former student of Sheikh Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al -Dabbar. He was actually known as Mujtahid. And people who know a little bit of knowledge, they know what Mujtahid is. Mujtahid is like, a, if you put thousands of Muftis together, then the Mujtahid is even higher than that. Like Imam Abu Hanifa is a Mujtahid. Imam Malik is a Mujtahid. So in his day, in Maliki Fiqh, he was a Mujtahid as well. Such a high level of scholarship that he, uh, he knew. This student I'm talking about, Sayyidina Ahmed Mubarak. And he was the foremost student uh, in, in his life who actually spent time and he is the one who actually wrote down a few utterances of uh, Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al which is known as this pure gold where, words from the words of Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al -Dabbah. He spent almost eight and many number of years but he said unfortunately I only wrote down a few months of his sayings and in English translation is over 1,000 pages long. In Arabic, maybe less, but in English translation with all the commentary is a huge book as well. So he's the one who actually relates many things, and he'll be quoted as the main person who actually you know, mentioned about this book and about the lives of Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al -Dabbar. And there are others as well, and especially that if you want to know miracle, know more about Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al that the best person to know is Shaykh Hamid al no one else, really. Even he himself, uh, Sayyidina, uh, this uh, scholar, Sayyidina Ahmed Mubarak uh, Lamati, Sayyidina Masi, he himself did not know Sayyidina Abdul Aziz al well when he first uh, came, to, uh, came to meet him. He used to question him so many things about Hadith and Quran and so on. And, and then when he used to get answers back, he used to be you know, awestruck, oh, wonderful answer, where, where did you learn this? And slowly start to realize that this is something special here. I'm into a gold mine here. This is not like normal, you know, person. He's something special here. So he himself mentions it. Obviously, I'm not doing a justice by mentioning now. If you got a copy of this book, there's a translation available. You can have a read and, and so on. And uh, I've actually prepared these about 47 slides. I'm not going to go through all that. It just touches upon some of these examples as well. So one of the, the first thing he said, the greatest miracle is, is that he was very strong on the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamaah. No one, you know, he, he was like the, he was a distinguisher, to distinguish who's on the right path, who's on the wrong. And it's not like just based on text uh, merely, although he knew what knowledge or what it was in every text. He could quote it, yeah, it's in that book as well. But he was witnessing, like I said there, although no formal training, but he had a direct vision and witnessing the correct, uh, could say, Akita position of, of many issues as well. And what is the right one as well, uh, 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 mashallah. So for instance, he knew about the, all these different refuting arguments of the very highly trained scholars who'd understand. He knew all that and he'll tell 
and who's doing wrong, who's doing right, what is the right, right position in this as well. And so he could easily refute any of the other 72 sects of Islam and, and state what is the correct one of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. And he gives many references as well, live account how he did that, and maybe I can touch, uh, touch upon that later on as well. Uh, so even the divine attributes, there was a thing that, oh, how do you actually understand about Allah's you know, sifat qualities? Do you take some kind of meaning to it? Or do we just confine to the, what the Salaf have said about not to take meanings out of it, but keep it to the original Allah knows best? So he, he explained that, that you know, we, we actually, it is, it is far beyond our capability to understand Allah's sifat. So it doesn't do justice by giving commentary as such. So give an example, like in, in paradise, we here we can have grapes, milk, honey. But are they like the honey and the milk and the grapes that we eat of this world? No, there's nothing in comparison except just by name we hear it. You cannot even imagine. It's in the Quran, isn't it? No eyes have seen, no ears have heard. Such blessings about these things, for example. So if you cannot even fathom those things, how can we comprehend the, the, the sifat and the qualities and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond our, you know, I could say, you know, uh, level of understanding as such. So he explained very beautifully as well. And even he mentioned, Sayyidina Abdullah Zabbaq, that even someone has wrong, you know, I could say, belief away from Sayyid, you know, Ahl Sunnah al Jamaat, that before he receives any illumination, before he receives any closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he has to rectify, and he has to rectify to have the belief of Ahl Sunnah al Jamaat in order to have the access. And that's why, in this you know, retreat, Alhamdulillah, in this course of Tariqa Muhammadiyah and purification, the first thing you actually learn about is to rectify your belief according to Ahl Sunnah al Jamaat and the necessary knowledge that you have to have. So, this part of the integral part of your journey. Without this, you cannot go ahead. So, this is what you will learn live in this course as well. So, like I said, like uh, Sheikh uh, Ahmed Mubarak, he had to discover who this uh, special gem is. So at the beginning, when he uh, get to know him, he uh, gave for example, one example, that once um, uh, his second son have passed away, and his, his uh, wife, the, so this, the mother of the son, are very much grieved. And just to console her, he mentioned, quoted this great Sheikh Mahfia, that he said something like, uh, when I look at the young boys, and I look at, their, uh, look at the afflictions they are, are going to arrive, I feel pity for them. Whoever amongst them dies has escaped all this. So they said that really that we all go to trials and tribulations in life. And when we see young children, you just say, oh, you know, look at that child. He has to go through all the difficulties in life that which we as an adult go through. And when a child passes away, you just say, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from all that trials and tribulations. So this Sheikh um, Mubarak, he actually quoted that to his wife, just to console her, look, you know, he's gone to a better place, don't worry about it, he doesn't have to suffer, or we have to go through. So he mentioned that uh, to his wife. The next day, he met Sheikh Sayyidina Abdulaziz al may Allah Ta'ala be pleased with him, and he then says, yesterday you said such and such to your wife. And he mentioned every word I quoted, with, uh, although no one had known about this conversation that I had with my wife in, in private. So then he started to realize, oh, how did he know this knowledge? No, no one knew about it. It's a private conversation I had with my wife. But yet, Sayyidina Abdullah Zabba not only just mentioned it, he quoted everything that you mentioned as well. And this theme, it carries on all the way. Not just him, there were other students as well. Now they also mentioned that how he knew through his hidden knowledge that so many you know, un you know, uh, unveiling things as well. And he used to quote it and he used to teach us, or he used to do our tarbiya, our uh, tazkiya through this as well. So like I said, uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, just to touch upon another one. Another In his one. early days, again, uh, Shah Sayyidina Abdulaziz al he had, he had certain uh, chest, you know, uh, you could say difficulties. So he used to have clove, just to have that relief, you know, effect of it uh, as well. And when, he, when you have clove, then the aroma, the smell, it, it stays with you in a very beautiful smell. So, Shaykh Sayyidina Abdulaziz al used to take that, and that, that aroma, that smell used to be all around him, only near him as well. And those who were around him used to smell this as well, especially Shaykh uh, Ahmed Mubarak as well. So what happened is one day, he went home at night, and he, he was in a state of sleep and awake. And suddenly he could smell this smell of clove everywhere. And he goes, oh, he's a Shaykh in my house, I don't see him, what is he? 
and then he actually followed the smell everywhere in his rooms, here, there, every other room, and tried to catch of it as well. And then he went to one room, then to another room, and so on. And then obviously he ended. The next day he came and told the sheikh that, uh, if I quote, um, that, uh, that I mentioned this matter to him about this aroma that I felt. And then the, he, very, you could say, he had a very, you could say, um, very uh, you could say, beautiful Jamal quality in a very you could say, light-hearted way. They said, yes, you smelled the smell, but where's the passion? Where's the love? It's only a smell you smelled indicating that I was there, but now you need to now understand you know, the teacher-student relationship, that you need to grow in your love and submission and following. That all these indications are there for you to understand you know, who the Sheikh is. And like I said earlier, that they never mentioned in their own life, you can see an example now, they never mentioned, I'm this, I'm the awli of the day, you have to submit to me, you have to follow me. That's not the way of our Sheikh, nor our teacher as well. So they used to, because he was quite close, he used to actually indicate like that. So look, realize, you know, for your own benefit, not because of themselves as such. Um, so, so there's one example I want to give about uh, Sheikh Said al Andalai, that Bahun was very young. And also very important, I want to point out something. That at a young age, you know, this is the example I'm giving you why, because it's for you and I. At a very young age, he used to work as well for a living. Although he was a Sayyid, Hassani Husseini, very pious, you know, uh, honorable family, and so on. But look, they had to go through work. Very young age, maybe six, seven, eight year old, he used to work uh, in a shop uh, for a person called Abdul Qadir, for example. So what does that tell us? That, oh, awliya means that, or you didn't sit in the masjid with a big tasbi saying, Allah, Allah, and everything will be provided for them. He'd have to worry about food, shelter, and everything. All the followers, the murid is going to give him everything, and everything will be laid out for him. He just have to do Allah, Allah, and take people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. Every awli, especially of the Amma Shaykh, they work for a living. They, they struggled. They went through hardship as well. People have this notion in it. Oh, you're an awli, you're a, from a pious scholarly family or awli family. Yeah? You're, you're guaranteed wealth. I have, I'm just a laborer. I have to work. I have no time for spirituality or go to retreats, learn about in the learn about spirituality. I have to earn a living. I've got family to feed. So sometimes, like with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well, that you know, he was a shepherd, all the prophets were shepherds as well. He worked for that you know, person at a young age. So once uh, there was a person called uh, Muhammad Umar, Sheikh Muhammad Umar, he went to Hajj at that time and, uh, to pr uh, perform the pilgrimage. And uh, Sheikh Saidina Adreza, at that time, at a young age, that uh, he wrote in a piece of paper that uh, there's an announcement we made that this uh, uh, Muhammad Umar person who works with us, he has passed away. So he wrote that down and his, his colleague, he saw that. And he said, well, what have you written? And he quickly rubbed it out. He said, nothing, uh, don't worry about it. And then later on, the news came from the Hajj pilgrimage as they returned. The news came that yes, uh, Sidi Muhammad Umar has passed away. He had a uh, uh, blessed death in Hajj as well. So they were all amazed that such a young person, how did he know this? And so later on, Sheikh Saidina, uh, Sheikh um, Ahmed Mubarak, he asked that question. He said, you know, I thought, you know, for example, that um, you had opening at a certain age, like uh, uh, Kari, uh, uh, I just was mentioning, the great opening meeting of Saidina Ahmed Khizid and the greatest opening of meeting Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in flesh and blood. That's how we met. This is called the greatest opening, Fatih Kabir, that they as though if I were to go and meet uh, Brother Tassif in flesh and blood, that's what they met. That's the power of awliya, the, the level they reached as well. Like so Shaykh Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani and all the awliya. And you'll hear later on from the Ustad, there are, broadly speaking, two levels of awliya. Ahle Taqween is like a more hidden awliya with special power and Ahle Irshad, who actually they're awliya and they do da'wah work and so on. But they're not at that highest level of awliya. They're all awliya friends of Allah. And amongst them, there are 313 approximately that they have a special duty at the highest level, a, a level, a level of awliya. They do special duty by Allah SWT. Like the angels do the duty, duties, they get selected as well. And amongst them, there are different rank and file. You know, you hear of the, the word kutub and, and abdal and so on, and wakil. And highest of all them is a ghoth. Is, you know, ghoth the helper, the chief helper as well. And through him, all the orders come through and many things get manifested as a duty they perform as well. 
And Sheikh Sayyidina Abdul Aziz was the host of the time, his time as well. Like we hear about Sheikh Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani, he was a host, you know, in a host park, they refer to him. He was a host in a very high level, uh, highest level of uh, caliber of awliya. And each generation, when they physically pass away, then they get replaced by someone else. To this day, it's continuous. In the previous generation, it continued. Sayyidina Ahmed Khizr was part of that gathering. But because of the life is extended, he carried on. After the coming of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Ummati of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's only the Ummati of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who actually occupied that seat of the highest level of awliya. So every generation is continuously happening as well. So at that, in that century, Shaykh Sayyidina Abdul Aziz at the Baq was the host of the time as well. And this fact, he didn't announce it as such. Is this uh, Ahmed Mubarak, this uh, great student, he found out through some conversation, by the way kind of thing just came about. In a certain, you know, indicative way, he got to realize which well, is the host of the time as well, and that's the level he had. So he said before that uh, b big uh, uh, illumination opening, he had already had certain openings, this spiritual, you know, unveiling that your experience. He already had that. He uh, blessed a uh, great um, uncle, uh, Sayyidina Arbi Fishtali, Ramahullah. He was a, a, also a man of knowledge, a great awliya, a great friend of Allah SWT. He has you know, be, uh, bestowed or given some kind of amana that he knew his, his grandson would be born and he will be the next uh, wali. So he left him like a trust. And this trust was said to mention about certain heart and certain khirka, you know, the special thing they wore. As soon as he wore this from his mother, blessed mother, he wore this at a very young age. He started to see many things spiritually. Like this death of this person, he could tell, although he couldn't go any much detail of, as such at the highest level. So he had that already opening in this young age. But look at this, what's the knowledge? And this is the lesson for you and I, everyone here. Many people have been, oh, I went to retreat, I've had opening, I've seen, mashallah, Kaaba Sharif now, I've seen Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I've achieved, I can go back to my life now, and do my own thing. I've done what I need to do, I've achieved. That's the wrong approach. The right approach is, look, he already, already as a child, he had an opening. But the desire to be, you know, uh, close to Allah to attain his pleasure, even intensified, like you heard from uh, Kari um, Ajaz, that he even went in, went in search in his adulthood as well, in his in teenage years, in fact. Went all the way, uh, he said India, but actually all the way to even Bangladesh, I think, as well, to look for a sheikh in 12 years. So that's the search for closeness, to be in close to Allah SWT, to find the path, even intensified, although he's already a wali as well. So look how sincere, how sincere they are, how humble they are in finding Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how it should be, inshallah. That wherever you are, we can increase, we can still advance, inshallah. If you're struggling, there's a way out, you know, in terms of living the bad life into a good life as well. And so on and so forth. I think a couple of minutes before the Asar, uh, Azam will go. Uh, if I get a chance, maybe in the future uh, as well, in the future retreats. And there are many things, inshallah. I'm not going to go to all of them, like I said. Uh, he had a special, so he had a special, you could say, uh, love towards the children as well. And many of these students of Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Abba used to come to us and say, oh, my son is not well, or my son is uh, not well, he's illness, he's suffering, and so on. And he used to make dua, I said, don't worry, he'll be fine. And they'll go back and see, oh, my son is okay. And even the writer of the book, that Sheikh uh, Ahmed Mubarak, he would say that to this day, this son of uh, so, so and so, he's still alive and fit and healthy. And he was on the throes of death until we met the Sheikh and he made dua for him and said, he'll be fine, don't, do not worry about him. So there are plenty of accounts like that in the book, full of it, inshallah. Uh, also, there's another great Sheikh of Shadri Shilsila called Sheikh Sayyidina Abdul, Abdul Salah bin Mashish. Many brothers had the fortunate uh, uh, opportunity to be there as well. Lie in the uh, uh, Atlas Mountains, in, in, in the border of Morocco. You can see Spain from there. Alhamdulillah, I've been once or twice as well. It's so high, it's 5,000 feet high. Uh, yeah, and it takes a few hours by coach to reach there. And when you stand up there at the top of it, you can see like the, the mountains of Spain from there as well. That's how high it is. And there's a great awliya, uh, this person called Sheikh Salah Abdul Salamin Mashish. He was a sheikh of Sheikh Sayyidina Abul Hashan Ali Shadli as well. And he basically he lived a life of Zuhot. He actually detached from the whole world and he went to the mountain top and used to live his life there. And I'm not going into the detail. He was a special friend of Allah as well. And so, this obviously physically departed many centuries ago. He's very known in Morocco as well, in, in, in Maghrib. And they would go and visit him. And there's the account of when Sayyidina Abdul Aziz 
with his you know, uh, caravan and uh, Ahmad Mubarak uh, visited him. So many obstacles come about. So for example, one account is given that uh, they were going and going through a pass. And there were some other caravans, other party were going, and they stopped for the night because they thought, oh, uh, you know, we can't make it anymore. But as Shah Sayyidina Abdul Aziz insisted, no, carry on. And they all thought, no, no, it's, it's getting very tired, tired, so why can't we rest? All the people have rested already in that pass, in that area, like a junction, for example. Why can't we rest? But he ordered them to carry on, and he carried on. And once they reached there, for example, you know, uh, uh, and then they did the, the meet, for example, uh, by noon, they did the ziyara of Sayyidina Abdul Salam Mashish, and they ordered them quickly, get ready, we're going to move from there as well, we're not going to disembark here as such. Then they went to near this town called Tituan, that's where they actually, where they're from. As soon as they arrived, you know, the, like they said, the sky discharged its sieves. So much torrential rain came down, and it lasted for days and days. So much rain is, you know, it's like such a rain that you can't even stand on the ground. You'd slid it down as well, and especially on the mountain top. Imagine that you're going down a steep, and in that rain, then it would have been really, really, you know, disastrous. So later on, you know, uh, uh, he mentioned Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Abbaq that did you see this torrential rain? And he replied, Indeed, I do. Oh, Sayyidi, he said, This is why I led you on, on that night. When I reached the shrine of Abu Mali Abdul Salam, I saw the rains. What do you think would have happened if this rain had overtaken us and those steep slopes and, uh, and, uh, and we had nothing with us to eat, nothing to feed our mounts, and the rain continued? Then he replied, Every conceivable hardship would have afflicted us if he managed to escape death. So imagine that's how you could, or you could say, uh, you could say um, uh, disaster of rain and then the, and the, uh, because a tornado came. That even if they had escaped death, they would have been in a huge difficulty. Then he was amazed by that and he kissed the, the noble Sheikh's hand and said, May Allah reward you for what you have done for us. And the accounts are many. I can go on and on and on. And I've already summarized. It took me 47 slides as well. And this is only slide number five, by the way. So, and I'm skipping here as well. So, like I said, it doesn't do justice by going through. But I just want to touch upon that, just to create that, that, that feeling. The whole purpose of this is to create a feeling of who are these awliya, who are the friends of Allah SWT. Who are we under the protection of? Who are we under the protection of who's guiding us? It's not like, you know, anything you hear. It is a, like a, it's, it's actually a revolution, what you're hearing. And the more examples, I'm not going through all that. Um, inshallah. Uh, what I want to also touch upon is, is one, another uh, murid or a fellow uh, student of uh, Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Abbaq, his name was uh, Sayyidi Ali, and I want to mention that he had a very, you know, uh, spent a long time with Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Abbaq, he learned so many things, and, uh, and, and, and so on. And how did he terbiya of people in terms of with very, uh, so I'm not mentioning you know, the slides now, but they said how they did the training of people is very in, in a beautiful, a very calm, and very respectful, loving way. It's not like our Indian sub subcontinent style with a stick. Why have we done this? And, and, and even though when we used to present our sins or something stuff, and they used to do it in such a way that it wasn't very hard for us as well. And when I was actually reading this as a refresher, it struck me how closely related to how others have does our terbiya as well. There's so many things we do mistakes during the week, during the uh, months and years. Again and again, we come back to them, come to the gathering. They never once say, oh, such and such, you've done this sin. How come, how dare you've done this? And I sat in front of me now. Never once. There are brothers I know, I can be witness to this. That you know, they're so shameful. I said, how can I go and face uh, no, Hazrat Sahib? I'm such an evil person. I've done this, and they 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 become so despondent. They go away for six months. Go away for three years. Oh, no, no, I don't want to go. To the point where they even have bad thoughts about the Sheikh as well. And then after three years, after six months, they're back. And they embrace him as though you've not done nothing wrong. You didn't okay. Carry on. Do this. Work on your tazkiyah. Carry on. You'll be fine. Such a loving way they actually do your tarbiyah and interact with you. You feel as though oh, I'm become old yeah, as well now. I'm become a special person. Yeah, I've got nothing, to, nothing wrong with me. And exactly like this, Sheikh Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Abdul who used to do therapy of people like that. 
in such a way, you know, is to indicate, do this and do that, in a very, very casual way. And you think, oh, that's okay, I can do this, it's quite easy thing to do. There's one, uh, one, another jurist, another mufti. See, another thing is here, another point, look, he himself said that he's not a scholar, Sayyidina Abdullah is the Bach. Most of his followers in his own life, they were muftis of the time, jurists, scholars, and mujtahids. They used to come to them, they have ailments of their heart, and I've got this quality, and I've got love of dunya, I've got love of women, I've got love of wealth, I've love of oxen and horses and uh, fields and so on. And used to stay with them and slowly used to do terbiya. So okay, now sell your ox. You know, you don't need that. It's fine. You use it somewhere else. And he would sell it and see all oh, that malady I had about heart, that attachment to the cows is gone now. You know, this field I had. Oh, I'm feeling a bit more relieved. And I've never would have thought about selling the cow normally because I've listened to the instructions. I'm feeling good now. And slowly led like this to the point where they used to say that we could go to the point where we did not care what people think about us anymore because we all oh, worried about what Allah SWT is thinking about us. So our heart became independent of people and dependent upon Allah SWT. That's purely by in the company and in the terbi of Sayyidina Shaykh Abdulaziz at the bar and those brothers here, inshallah, you can meet up, inshallah, those brothers here for years with Hadrat Sahib, they can give you exact, very similar account that what they've learned, what they've done is, is they embrace you, they never let you go of it. We make all the mistakes, but they never let it go. They're waiting for you to approach, to do your tarbiyah, and to train you, and so on. Uh, so that's a beautiful, uh, obviously I'm not going into any details, so I'm summarizing it for you as well. Uh, so I just want to touch upon one thing, um, uh, so many other things to mention. <clears throat> See, uh, I, I've shown this slide to one of our brothers. He said it will take you five days to go through all that. And I can see that why. Uh, so, um, the one thing about the Tarbiya I mentioned is, is another thing I want to say that um, Ustad Kers will touch upon. They said the one thing with the only attached to the true awliya, in one sense, is as though you are taking poison. Now you might think, oh, it's a derogatory thing you said. No, it's not. It's because it purifies you from all impurities and all the wrong attachments as well. To the point where you don't have any attachment to this scholar, this sheikh, this, this person whatsoever. Because you realize, when I've got the source, when I've got the source of it, when I've got the you know, phone to the charger, why do I need a Wi-Fi charger borrowing from someone else? So basically you start to disengage from everyone else and focus on the person and who takes it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's another beauty of being with the true Sheikh of, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Uh, so I just want to say the last part before I finish, which I thought is very, very powerful. Uh, it's a good news for us. So there's one Sheikh, uh, one Sheikh, he's a jurist as well. His name is Sheikh Ali Abdul, uh, Abdullah al-Sabaghi, uh, al uh, that he lived a long life and um, he had many issues and he used to live quite far away as well and um, he used to interact with Sayyidina Abdulaziz Abbaq so many times but before his deathbed uh, he decided, he told his family I'm going to go and spend time with my sheikh now he was in his 90s by then and so he came and he spent, uh, spent time with Sayyidina Abdulaziz Abbaq and he stayed in Sayyidina Abdulaziz Abbaq's house as well they used to nurse him and look after him and then he fell ill and, and so on and so at the last, just before his death, this is the one I want to point out to you. The Sheikh Sayyidina Abdullah Zabak one day said, oh, this is Sidi, Sidi Ali, he's unwell. And just now, uh, Sayyidi Ali has now seen Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq as well. Just now, just before the throes of death. So the people who were around him, they ran upstairs. He was upstairs you know, in his deathbed and tried to you know, see what he's saying. He could not speak at the time. But he was asking, oh, have you met Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Have you met Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq? And he nodded in agreement, yes, I have. And he, then he had a beautiful smile. And then at that moment, his spirit uh, departed, passed away. Look at the beautiful death he had. And then Sayyidina Abdul Izzabah said that God uh, is mighty and glorious. Um, though, uh, and his grace, of course, and his generosity, had he sat in Sabahat for 90 years, he wouldn't have attained such state that he's died in now. Just because he was in company and his death happened at the hand of Sayyidina Abdullah Zabbar. And why this is very important and to us, because every one of us here we're experiencing now, we're at their hands, we're at, uh, they're serving us in, you know, in one sense with food, everything else, with knowledge, and then with their guidance. 
And in that 24 hours, many of us are in that state as well. Sisters who are at home, brothers that are at home and who are here. That within space of hours, people have met Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or they've seen Kaaba Sharif or they've seen in the companion or pious people or they've seen, for example, Arshwala Sunatal and so on. Within hours. Imagine now, if we can continue like this our life, then there's a good news for us. Inshallah, we also hope to die like this, having the witness of Sayyidina Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Ali, the Mashayikh, and our death comes like this as well. Isn't that what we want? And this only happened because as a mercy, as a means, that this person, you know, this Mufti Sayyidi Ali, he came and he wanted to spend time uh, with Sayyidina Abdulaziz the Bar, and Allah SWT ordered him that his soul will be departed then. And look at the death he had. Although if he had stayed in his own time, he's a Mufti, this wouldn't have been possible, as told by Sayyidina Abdulaziz the Bar. So you could say the history is repeating itself now after 300 years. So that's the importance I want to give, that it's not just the account of history now, it is a living thing, it's happening in our lives as well. So we should avail the opportunity, grab it. It is said that, that uh, what is the, in the Quran it comes, uh, uh, grab hold of the rope of Allah. What is the rope of Allah? And have you ever thought about? You know, it's not a physical entity, it's about this, the Quran, the Sunnah, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the guidance, the, the, the blessing, spiritual blessing, the guide, the Mashaykh. These are the rope of Allah you should hold fast to, inshallah. For our own benefit, and then one day, we could be like this, um, uh, this, uh, uh, this student, Sayyidina Ahmed Mubarak, that he became the means to convey to others about Sayyidina Abdul Aziz Bagh and the teachings on the day. And many generations benefited, many centuries benefited. You'll hear it tonight by uh, Imam Kaisal mention. And especially the legacy now, obviously a primary with Sheikh Ahmed the Bagh, how this is spreading through all corners of the world. Although they, they, they were such selfless people, they didn't want to know about themselves. They were happy just to you know, be with Allah SWT and to remember him. Like, like the, the ancestor, the Mashaykh Sayyidina Abdul Salam in Mashish. He, he departed from the whole world. He wanted to spend time with Allah SWT. But Allah SWT has illuminated their, na uh, their names, their, their, their stature, like guiding stars. Sahabas are the guiding stars for the whole Ummah. These are the guiding stars for us, for the generations to come as well. And all this achieved is not because they wanted fame, name, power, you know, status in society. No, they only wanted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his closeness and his pleasure and uh, closeness of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the means through which takes you there is the mashaykh and the teacher inshallah. Then you truly become independent. You truly become the man of Allah. You truly, you can become the guiding star for the future generations to come. Until that time of uh, Sayyidina Imam Mahdi uh, until he comes alayhi salam, that we could be that person, oh, Tanim was a, in a century from 21st century, he was such a person, he revived the whole of East London, for example, inshallah. And he, he made an impact at East London as well. Now they call it Tanimiya. The location of Tanimiya, I want to go visit that area, inshallah. So you can be that. You want to, you know, the whole reason is you should be empowered. You should feel the uh, zest, the knowledge, the passion to change my life to the hands of the Sheikh. And then I want to help others as well, inshallah. So with this note, I've overtaken some time. Um, uh, forgive me if I've done so, inshallah. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala bless you all. And uh, if I said anything which is uh, obviously uh, out of character or which is incorrect, may Allah Ta'ala forgive me for this. And any goodness I've said, obviously, is ultimately from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala's mercy and blessings and the few other blessings from the Mashaykh as well. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Subhanakallah. Alhamdulillah. Shadallah. Lillahi wa ta'ala. Wa ta'ala. Something to happen to me But this waiting comes with trials and challenges Nothing in life is free My Lord, show me right